Summit in New York City this week. We're joined by Nicholas from Cranston, Rhode Island, and Sajen from uh, Wichita, Kansas, to talk about their projects. Nicholas, let me start with you. Your focus, your project is called Gotta Have Soul, and it focuses on shoes. Tell me why you thought that was important and what you're trying to do. Well, my name is Nicholas Lowinger. I'm from Cranston, Rhode Island. I'm 15 years old. And three years ago, I started the Gotta Have Soul Foundation to donate brand new footwear to children in homeless shelters throughout the United States. The reason I started this organization is because when I was five years old, my mother brought me to a homeless shelter because she wanted me to see how other people were living and be more appreciative of everything I had. While I was there, I noticed that many children either had footwear that didn't fit them, footwear that was in terrible beat up condition, or some of them just didn't have footwear at all. So that really shocked me. I went home that night, I went through all of my used things in my closet, all my shoes, clothing, stuff that I didn't wear anymore, and the next day I came back to donate them to the shelter. And I was able to help a few kids, but it really bothered me that I couldn't give footwear to all the children, and new footwear especially. So I, at that age, I knew, knew that there was a big need that someday I would like to help and try to solve that problem. But at that time, I wasn't really able to. So when I was 11 years old, it was two years before my bar mitzvah, and I needed to come up with an idea for my bar mitzvah project, which was something to do in the community, to help out in the community, uh, to participate in my bar mitzvah. And I decided to do something in the shelter because I had that connection from when I was very little. And I decided to donate brand new footwear for a few different reasons. For one, I believe that the children in these homeless shelters are just normal children, just like myself, just like everybody else, their families have just fallen on hard times and they deserve the same as everybody else does. How are you uh, addressing this today? Are you working with uh, organizations, uh, manufacturers to get those shoes? What, how, are you, how are you actually providing them now and how many people are you helping? Sure. So at the moment I've given about 8,000 children new footwear in 15 states in the United States and I've I've gotten many don I received many donations from many different types of people, whether it's private donors donating monetarily or donating brand new footwear, or whether it's companies, big companies, small companies donating product, uh, new footwear or uh, funds so that I can go out and purchase the footwear for children. Sometimes um, I'll get an order in that which is via email from the shelter with a list of children, uh, their name, age, gender, and shoe size. So I picked those shoes out of our warehouse, which is my garage. <laughs> and sometimes I may not have uh, that sneaker or shoe in stock for that size. So the money provides an opportunity for myself to go out and purchase the shoe for the children because I don't say no to any, child, any homeless child. So, Jen, your project is called Pov Solve? Absolutely. What, what is it about? Pov Solve is a nonprofit organization that I founded in 2010 after a trip back to India, to my homeland, where I really noticed the devastating reality that surrounded world poverty. And it was after this trip that I decided that I did not just want to realize the problem, I wanted to take action and inspire others to take action as well. So I returned back to the States where I founded a nonprofit, PovSolve. And basically, we work to aid initiatives in education, shelter, food, water, and health to help these people living in poverty and not only provide them with the resources in that short-term, temporary um, help to get them back up on their feet, but to create a sense of stability, to help them break out of that, to help them learn, provide them with education. I believe that education unlocks doors, and I, we want to ultimately see them grow out of this and into a better light and succeed and break this chain. Now you're, you're ta tackling a lot. Absolutely. How do you decide what's achievable, what's important, and where you can actually have some impact? Absolutely. 
Um, over our past two years, we have grown a lot and we have over 500 volunteers who are mobilized all around the world. And this actually is the key that truly helps us work on our individual initiatives. And although I do lead my team, it's very important that my team works together. And we do, um, in, within the team, we have different initiatives that we work on. For example, um, this upcoming year, one of our primary goals is to build an orphanage in Zambia, Africa. And we have a specific team who's working on that. We also have another goal of administering a vaccination clinic in a rural part of India. And there's a healthcare team that's working on that. So I truly see the sense of teamwork. And when we all come together and collaborate and that is truly my message through my work I enjoy traveling around the nation and speaking to children that changing the world saving the world doesn't mean helping millions and millions of people it starts with helping just one person and when we all come together and realize that when we collaborate when we share resources networks we have what it takes to solve such a daunting problem with small steps